Well, welcome to Samara Training and this occupational health and safety tutorial on using a bow tie to c consider um, local exhaust ventilation or LEV. My name is Jonathan Scopes. First the bow tie. Well you can see the picture here at the top we have a hazard in the hazard shaded box and it can be any new hazard. Because of this hazard a co something bad could happen. We'll call that the top event. The top event is something harmful either to people or to property or to reputation. Things that can cause the top event happening are threats. Threats happen before the top event. So a threat, if it happens, will cause the top event which is the harm to the person or the business. So we want to put in place barriers. So these barriers will help us control the threat that causes the top event. So that's one side of the bow tie. The other side is, if the barriers fail, the top event happens, there will be a consequence. Something bad will happen. And we can have consequences after the top event. So the top event happens, the consequences happen. But we can make the consequences less bad by putting in mitigations. So mitigations reduce the effect or reduce the seriousness of the consequences. So that's the theory. Let's apply it now to local exhaust ventilation. So this is a simple local exhaust um, ventilation system diagram. It's taken from uh, Health and Safety Guidance Note 258. So at the bottom, we have the inlet, the hood. That's the place where we're sucking the air with the fumes or the air with the dust into our system. So once it's in the system, come through the hood, this contaminant gets sucked up through the ducting, through bends maybe, or through straight pipes, and then it goes into an air cleaner. The air cleaner is usually a filter, but not always. Then we have something to move the air. Why would the air want to move? Because there's a fan, in this case, driving the air. And then after it's been driven through the filter and it's been cleaned, then we're going to discharge it in, a, in a, an appropriate place. So that's the basic system. A slightly more complicated system is this one, where you can see, um, I think you're showing four different branches where we'd have hoods at the end, the little ones, vertical pipes. Each of those has a hood at the end. And then the main pipe goes on somewhere else, so it might be a bigger system. And then all these pipes come down to the central duct, and then it goes into the air um, cleaner. And in this case, it's not a filter. The air comes in at the bottom, and it rises slowly because it's a big pipe. And so the, the dust, in this case, settles down at the bottom, and the clean air goes through the air um, mover and is exhausted out into the roof, above the roof. So that's another example of what the exhaust system might look like. So now we'll think about the um, threats that are possible for our local exhaust ventilation system. Well, we'll look at each of those five parts of the system in turn. So the first is the hood. Maybe the hood is not functioning well. Or maybe the ducting is not working well. Or the air cleaner is failing. Or the power, the, the air mover, is failing. Or the discharge is failing. It's not in, a, not in an appropriate place. If any of those happens, then our ventilation system fails and the people who are depending on it will be exposed to either the dust or the fumes. So let's look at the first threat, which is the hood not functioning well. So if we don't capture the fumes, or we don't capture the dust properly, the fumes are available for people to breathe. We don't want that. So we could bring the hood closer. Another thing we could do is increase the airspeed. We suck more air in. Another thing we could do is adjust the angle of the hood so it better catches the fumes. So if the fumes are rising, we might put the hood above it. Or if, the, if it, they're getting um, produced this way, we might put the hood here to catch them. Or we could enlarge the hood. And if we put that on the bow tie diagram, 
Um, that will come up in a minute. Okay, just to show you, so the, the fumes a bit on the left hand, sorry, on the right hand side, you're in the captor, the fumes have been produced vertically, but we're catching them horizontally. In the middle one, the receptor, the, the bits and the sparks from the grinder are coming out in one direction, so obviously we put our, um, our hood to catch them in that same direction and catch the air with it to pull it into our system. And on the last one, the enclosing one, the fumes are coming everywhere, but we have an enclosure around it, and we're sucking air out the top, so all the fumes are going up into our system. So now I've put it on a bow tie, and at the top line of the bow tie, um, I've enlarged at the bottom. So it says the hood is not functioning. So we bring the hood closer, that's a barrier. We increase the airspeed, that's another barrier. We adjust the angle of the hood, another barrier. Or we could enlarge the hood, a fourth barrier. Okay, well let's, that's the hood. Let's move on now to the ducting. Well, if the ducting fails, it could fail because it's corroded. Well, we could replace the corroded ducting. Um, it could fail because there are too many bends. It's difficult to pull flows of liquid or flows of air through bends, so we could straighten the ducting. Instead of having sharp bends, we could have gentle, easy bends to make it easier for the air and the fumes or air and the dust to go through the system. And lastly, we can get the accumulated debris, if it's dust or any other um, things that are in the ducting, out by cleaning it. If we put that on the diagram, we've got the second line um, enlarged at the bottom, so the ducting is not functioning well, and we've introduced four barriers. We've replaced, it, we've replaced the corroded ducting, we've straightened the ducting, we've made the bends smooth bends, easy bends, and we've cleared the debris, and so we have the ducting functioning well. We'll move on to the third threat. Well, the air cleaner may fail. What can we do about that? Well, we could replace the filter, or we can inspect the filter. So we inspect the filter routinely, regularly, and we know the filter's in good condition. We could maintain the filter, means cleaning it, or replacing it, and we have three barriers now for the, for the air cleaner. Putting it on the diagram, the third line, enlarged at the bottom. So for the air cleaner failing, we can inspect regularly, we can maintain the filter, or we can replace the filter. Great, so now we've done three. Let's move on to the fourth. The air mover, the fan, is failing. Well, again, we could inspect it regularly, check that it's working as it should. We could maintain it. All machines, like motors, benefit from regular maintenance. If the blades themselves are corroded, we could replace them. And we can check the power supply. If the power is down, the blades will be turning slowly and not working so well. So we can put this on the diagram. So the fourth line, enlarged at the bottom, says the air mover is failing, and we have four barriers this time. We can inspect the, um, the fan, the air mover. We can maintain it. We can replace corroded blades. We can check the power supply. Okay, move on to the last one, which is the discharge failing. Now, the discharge is where the, the, the cleaned air gets blown out somewhere. Well, if we don't have it high enough, that air, which will still have something in it that we don't want, some contaminant, it will be in, a, in an area where we might breathe it ourselves. We don't want that, so we need to have it high enough. We need to make sure it's away from windows. We don't want to blow it out of the exhaust and blow it in the windows of a nearby office. And then if there's a general direction of the wind, we want our vent to be also working with the wind, so the wind will help disperse the, the, the remaining um, fumes. Put that on the diagram, expand it at the bottom, so we have the discharge fails, the air outlet is not high enough, we move it up, the air outlet's too close to windows, we move it from the windows, and we turn the angle of the outlet so that it works with the wind to blow it away. And now we have 
completed one side of our bow tie diagram. But it's possible that any one of those five could fail. All the barriers that we have could fail. And the top event will happen, and the exhaust will fail, and someone or some, some people will be exposed to the contamination. For that, there'll be consequences. So we'll consider two consequences. The first is the workers are aware that it's failing. And the second is they're exposed to long-term health issues. So let's look at the first. Well, if they're aware of it failing, if you have a system in place that says, if you notice something is going wrong, report it, and then something gets done, that's a barrier. Or they could stop the work, and that's a barrier. So that would control, that would mitigate against the, the failing system. And then long-term health issues, if the system is failing, they will be breathing some of the contamination. So we can measure their health, health surveillance, or we could relocate the workers somewhere else. And if we put that on our diagram, our bow tie, we end up with this. We end up with two consequences, each with two mitigations, things to make it less bad. So if you're aware of it failing, you can report it, or you can stop the work. And if you have a long-term health issue, we can measure your health and record the fact, let's say your lungs are not working so well, and we can relocate you to a safer place. And if we look at the bow tie as we have it at the moment, there it is um, completed. And we have five threats, the blue ones, controlled, we hope, by 18 barriers. If they fail, we have two consequences, the red ones, reduced by four mitigations. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Thank you.